Citrus Bowl as the Tennessee Volunteers take on the Iowa Hawkeyes on New Year's Day, January the 1st, a 1 p.m. Eastern time kickoff on ABC. This game taking place down at Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida. The line in this one, uh, latest line coming from our friends over at scoresandodds.com. Tennessee is an eight and a half point favorite. The over under set at 36 and a half. And guys, I, I didn't include this in my notes, but I feel like for me personally, and for many college football fans watching this game, the total has to be the top storyline here. Like, if you're watching this game, one of the reasons I'll be tuned in outside of the fact that it's an SEC bowl game and I'm intrigued to just see how it plays out. But I don't know if this is fact, but it feels like it is. It feels as if the under has hit in every single Iowa football game this year. Like, death taxes and the under when Iowa plays. Like, and they cannot set the under low enough. Guys, we've had some of our gambling picks where, I mean, we've taken under 24 and a half or 27. I mean, some crazy low totals. Over under in this one, 36 and a half. With the way Iowa plays football, that feels astronomical. Like, is that the easiest bet of the college football bowl season? I mean, honestly, genuinely, is there an easier bet than under in this game? Because Iowa's got one of the, I think, actually the worst offense in college football. They field a great defense. I can't tell if Iowa is the worst 10-win team I've ever seen or if, if they're the best 10-win team because they've overcome a horrific offense. But either way, Death taxes and the under when Iowa takes the field. Again, if nothing else from that perspective, that's why I'm I'm excited to tune in and watch this game just to see, does the under hit again in an Iowa football game? Now, looking on the field, guys, our top storylines, you know what I think is interesting, right? We're talking quarterbacks. Joe Milton, I think, more than likely is going to get the start for Tennessee. You know, what version of him do you get under center, right? We've seen Joe be really, really good at times, and other times make you scratch your head and wonder what the heck is going on through his brain. But how much of Nico do we get? Uh, I, I know Tennessee fans are clamoring to see the prized five-star, the, the prized uh, signee, if you will. He is the $8 million quarterback on Tennessee's roster and uh, the guy that is the quarterback of the future. Let's call it what it is for Tennessee. Um, and bowl games present a great opportunity for him to showcase his talent, showcase his skill set, but you obviously want to win the football game too. So you wonder how much, if at all, does Josh Heupel feature Nico? Does he play at all? Do we see him trot out on the field and 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 make an impact against Iowa, or is it more so the Joe Milton show and they're depending on Joe Milton and letting Bazooka Joe work one last time? Again, what version of Joe Milton do you get? Because we've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, right? We saw it all throughout the SEC season. So I just wonder at quarterback, what do you get against a really, really good Iowa defense? Now, on the Iowa side of things, realistically, guys, what can they do offensively? I mean, guys, you look at the numbers. It's insane. They average less than 250 yards per game offensively. There are many teams that average more than that passing, solely passing per game. Iowa dead last in offense, basically every single offensive category. They're going to have to score, right? I mean, I don't think anybody expects this to be some high-scoring shootout, if you will. But Iowa's going to have to, I know it sounds funny, score double digits to have a chance in this one. My question is, is Iowa capable of doing that? And I mean that with sincerity. I don't mean that to be funny. I don't mean that as a joke. Is Iowa capable of scoring in the double digits in this football game? Guys, I think what's interesting, too, the opt-outs. How do the opt-outs affect both these teams, specifically, though, Tennessee? Tyler Barron has hit the portal and since has committed to Ole Miss. Um, you know, some other guys, who are they going to have available on the offensive side? How do the opt-outs affect Tennessee? Does that hold them back or limit what they can do in this football game? And also, guys, Iowa's going for history in this game, believe it or not. It'd be just the fourth time in school history that Iowa has reached 11 wins if they can get the win over Tennessee. And obviously, guys, on the Tennessee side of things, I don't think it was the, the season that Vol fans were hoping for, right, going 8-4. and four. It wasn't a bad season after you lost Hendon Hooker, uh, Jalen Hyatt at the wide receiver position. I mean, I, I don't think you look at it as some terrible season. 
but I don't know that it really met the expectations of Tennessee fans. But hey, you win a ninth game in a bowl game, you win a New Year's Day bowl. I still I think there's still something to be said for that. You put together a fairly solid recruiting class. Uh, maybe not exactly what Tennessee fans were hoping for, but you continue to build that positive momentum if you take down Iowa in this football game. And again, you go into the offseason with nine wins, feeling really good about yourself. And I think it sets you up well for 2024. Makes everything better, obviously, when you're able to win that bowl game. And and again, taking down a quality opponent in the Iowa Hawkeyes, a 10-win football team. Um, you know, even though they've done it with defense and the offense has been terrible, it would not take away from how good of a win this would be for Tennessee. So with that being said, the prediction for this game, guys, I think this is going to be a low-scoring game. That goes without saying. I think under 36-and-a-half is the most no-brainer bet in this game. I'm really tempted, too, to go Iowa plus 8-and-a-half, but I just cannot trust them offensively to do anything, right? We forget that Tennessee – Fields a really, really good front seven. Some inconsistencies in the back end, like a lot of other teams, but still a solid front seven. I think it's going to be really, really difficult for Iowa to move the football up and down the field, guys. Um, again, I think a lower scoring game. I'm fascinated to see, does the under hit yet again? I think it will. I think Iowa's defense will give Joe Milton some fits, but I think Tennessee will do just enough to put up enough offense to where this game will be out of reach for Iowa. So again, guys, I do think Tennessee gets the win. I think they notch their ninth win on the season. I like the Vols to win the Citrus Bowl. Guys, lock me in. Give me Tennessee 17, Iowa 6. And again, many of you will scoff at that score prediction. Like, man, like what a snoozer. But guys, these are the type of games that Iowa has played all season long. And so like, why wouldn't... I, I just... I think that 36 and a half number is crazy. I think that's crazy. I think under 36 and a half is free money in this game. I think it's it's stealing, guys. Take everything you have and put it on the under 36 and a half. Because I'm also respecting their defense. Like Iowa's defense, very, very good defense. Tennessee, it's going to be a struggle to move the football. But I just don't see any way in which Iowa scores double digits in this game. So again, guys. I think Tennessee ends their season on a high note in Orlando. Give me Vols 17, Iowa 6 in the Citrus Bowl.